Rebecca, thanks for joining us. We're going to talk to you about being polite. Being polite is all about being respectful and being respected. Being respectful and being polite will help you in friendships, school, family, and later in your job. But being respectful and being polite isn't something that just happens something you must learn in practice, a lot like playing a sport or an instrument. Yeah, the more you do it, the easier it becomes, and the better you are at it. Be respectful. Be polite. We're proud to be polite! to make friends, don't you? Friends are fun, and the first step in making friends is in meeting them. But sometimes, meeting people can be kind of scary, unless you know what to do. So let's talk about meeting people. You'll meet people at school. Maybe they'll be in your homeroom, or teachers, coaches, or other people who work at your school. They may play at the park with their family. They may even be celebrities who come to your school, or famous people you meet outside school, at concerts, sports events, or awards banquets. You may even meet people on your first jobs. Hi, I'm Richard Pumpler, and I'm here to wash your car. Hi, I'm Brad Humphreys, and I'm here to babysit. So, how do you meet people? First, you must be willing to meet people, rather than hang back, even if you're shy. Or, wait until people speak to you. Go over and meet them. Hi, I'm Wayne. What's your name? I'm Ryan. Hi, I'm Rebecca Williams, and I came from Ms. E. Brown's class to check out the VCR. Hi, welcome to our school. Thank you. Hi, my name's Zach. What's your name? Hi, I'm Anna. When you meet people, look them in the eye, say your name clearly, and smile. Let's talk about looking people in the eye. When you meet people, look them in the eye and count one, two. Watch the scenes you saw earlier without eye contact, and let's see what you think. Hi, I'm Wayne. What's your name? Hi, I'm Rebecca Williams, and I'm from Miss E. Brown's class, and I've come to check out the VCR. Hi, welcome to our school. In some cultures, people look down to show respect. They don't look you in the eye. If you meet someone like this, don't get in their faces or become demanding. Hey, hey, you! Look at me when I'm talking to you. Respect their way. Another part of introducing yourself is saying your name so that people can understand it, rather than slur your words. Say your name clearly. Don't mumble. Pause before you say your first name and your last name. Hi, I'm Allison Edwards. Hi, I'm Allison Edwards. Lastly, smile. Look pleasant and happy to meet people. What's wrong here? Nice to meet you. Hey, Robert. Hi, Robert. Nice to meet you. Yeah, whatever. But you needn't overdo it either. Oh my gosh, Mr. Tom, I'm your biggest fan. Everybody likes you, but I like you the most. You're the greatest person I've ever met. Just be natural. You are the greatest person. Now we're ready for the next step, handshakes. Although you won't need them all the time, handshakes are good ways to greet people. You see people do them all the time. Here's a good way to shake hands. Hold up your right hand. Spread your thumb away from your fingers. Keep your hand open until you connect with the person's thumb. Then grip your hands like this. Shake and let go. Shaking hands is a lot like the three bears. Not too hard, not too soft. Shake just right. And not too many times either. I can't believe I'm just shaking your hand. I'm so happy. OK, so what if two of your friends don't know each other? What do you do? You introduce them. And what if your grandmother came to school and you passed the principal in the hall? What do you do? You introduce them. So let's talk about introducing people. When you introduce people, say their names and something about them. Hey, Brittany, this is Natasha. She's on my soccer team. Brittany and I live on the same street. When you are introduced, say nice to meet you and repeat the person's name. That helps you remember the person's name. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Natasha. 
Hi, Dr. Price. This is my mother, Mrs. Davis. She's here for our program. Nice to meet you, Dr. Price. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Davis. You might want to stand to meet adults, or at least sit up straight. If someone mispronounces your name, simply correct them. Hey, Jafar. That's Jamar. Opal, would you hand me those books? It's Ruby. Oh, excuse me. When talking to people, say their names. That way, people will know that you're talking to them. Look, Coach, I put these balls back. Good job, James. Thanks. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Davis. You have a lovely daughter. Thank you. See how easy it is? Now that I know how to meet people, I don't feel as shy. And making and keeping friends is a lot easier. It was nice meeting you. Bye. What do you do when you forget someone's name? You meet hundreds and hundreds of people everywhere you go. At the mall, at school, on vacation. So you just might forget someone's name because people change all the time. But people like for you to remember their names. So here are a few tips that can get you through what can seem very awkward. Act friendly rather than avoid people. Smile and nod. Don't hide. Say what you do know about them. Hey, so you at the concert. Yeah, wasn't it great? You can introduce yourself and the people you're with. Hi, I'm Latoya. This is my friend, Sable. And hope they say their name back. Nice to meet you. I'm Charlie. If you don't remember, ask a friend. What was his name? Or just admit you can't remember their name. I forgot your name. I'm sorry, what's your name? Richard. Try to remember people's names. It's good for your personal and professional life. Hi, I'm Chris, and this is my school. There are a lot of people in my school. Adults, children, boys and girls. Many different kinds of people. If we want to have respect, we have to know how to be respectful. Being respectful of property means taking care of your things, the places around you, special occasions, and things that don't belong to you. I found this bracelet on the playground. Being respectful of people means listening to them, being kind to them, and being polite to them. Can you imagine how hard it would be to live and learn if we didn't have respect? Tyrone is calling me names, and Stephanie's making fun of my clothes, and no one listens to me. That's so stupid. What a dumb idea. That's so stupid. Ugh, I didn't know I sounded like that. Respect is treating others the way you want to be treated. Not everyone knows how to be respectful. Some children, and even some adults, are not always sure how to show their respect. Some people might do or say things that are disrespectful just to get others to laugh, and some people do laugh. But when someone says or does something that hurts someone's feelings or damages things that belong to all of us, that's not funny. That's disrespectful. I'm going to show you some scenes, and I want you to find the person who's respectful and the person who isn't. Let's stuff these paper towels on the remote and watch it overflow. Yeah, and let's break it in so no one will catch us. No, guys, don't do that. It's going to make a big mess. And who's going to clean it up? Hey, I wonder what's in Mary's locker. What? Look at somebody else's things. No way. Miss Clay, Miss Clay! Well, I can't hear. Let her talk. We got a test tomorrow. Let's poke it with the paper clip and see what happens. Stop! That's expensive. You might break it. Wait, where's my retainer? Wait, where's my math book? I'm going to be careful with my retainer. Let's see what books I need to take home. Being respectful and showing respect is our way of helping each other. And if everyone's helping each other, then that means someone's helping you too. Being respectful can help us at school, at home, and in the future, at work. Bye. Be 
known for being honest. Some children find something on the playground, on the bus, in the cafeteria, or a gym, and think just because they found it, it's theirs. But that's dishonest. Turn in lost things that don't belong to you. If someone doesn't claim them, maybe you can have them then. Sometimes you even get a reward for finding them. Of course, be careful about accusing people. Teacher, he stole my book bag. No, it's mine. Oh, that's mud over there. Sorry. Be honest about what happened. As you did it, admit it. Apologize. And if appropriate, ask to replace it. If you saw someone break something, tell the truth. Don't lie and never cheat. I win, I win, no, I didn't. win. you change the rules. That's cheating. We don't play with cheaters. There are times when not saying anything is better than saying something hurtful. That is called tact. Boy, it's the worst baseball player I've ever seen. Good try, good try. Swing level next time. Be known for being honest, fair, and tactful. Oh, by the way, your slip's showing. Well, the results are in for our study of the shock value of polite words and phrases. And the most shocking polite phrase is, I'll be happy to. Would you take this to Mrs. Allison's room? I'd be happy to. Would you please call my mom and tell her what we'll be doing? Sure, I'll be happy to. The second most shocking polite phrase is, need any help? Need any help? Need any help? Another polite word which gets a great reaction is, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. But the most important words you can ever say or write are, thank you. Dear, Dear Mr. and Mr. Mrs. Mrs. Howell, thank, thank you for being, being such, such good homeroom parents. Rebecca, I just want to thank you for helping Jennifer today when she fell. You're welcome. I'd like to thank all our students and parents for making this such an exceptional school. Using polite words and phrases is respectful, but how you say them is just as important. What if you use polite words and phrases, but you said them like this? When someone is having trouble with something, what can you say? Need any help? Can I help you with that? I'll get it. What are you penny? I'm not doing that for nothing. When you didn't understand what someone said, what do you say? I beg your pardon. I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you meant. Huh? What? What do you want? And if you hurt someone's body or feelings, what can you say? Oh my, are you all right? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. Be sure to get your feelings hurt. Don't be such a crybaby. What if you were offered something to eat? What can you say? Looks delicious. Yes, please. What is that? Yuck, are we having that again? And if you pass someone in the hall, what can you say? Hi, how are you? Hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Ms. Morris. Eh, uh, whatever. When someone's won a competition or done a good job, what can you say? Great job, everybody. Congratulations. Good job. Yes! Anybody could have done that. What's the big deal? And if someone gives you a compliment, what can you say? Thank you. Thanks. That's nice for you to say. I appreciate that. You've got to be kidding. This old thing? I could have done better if you'd given me more time and money. Sometimes, people don't know the right words to say. They use bad language or make suggestive remarks. They call people names or try to insult them. But talk like that makes the people who use it look bad. It demeans them. Think you can get or keep a job using language like that? I don't think so. What's the point? Four eyes, four eyes. Looks like bottom to bottom. Looks like some d headlights. Mop head, mop Ooh, head. what a haircut. Can I roll up that thing? Man, you sure do stink. Yeah, where you been sleeping? We 
Piggy can't play with a spaz. Man, look at them cheap shoes. Can't your mama buy you some better shoes than that, boy? When someone insults you or your friend, stand your ground. Look them right in the eye and tell them to stop. Stop! I don't like you calling me names. Yeah, where are you best leaving? I'll forgive you for asking if you forgive me for not answering. Hey guys, ease up. He's just learning. The shoes are fine. You shouldn't pay that much attention to shoes anyway. Can't work with you, dude. You got bad piece of pie. If you can, avoid people who are insulting, mean, and crude. But sometimes you can't, and you can't work it out yourself. So talk over solutions with a trusted adult. Now, you're aware of the power of what you say and how you say it. I hope you'll use polite words a lot because they work. They make life much better. I've enjoyed being with you, and thank you for having me. Goodbye. One thing I've learned is to realize there are people who, no matter what you do, will always like you and think you're terrific. They could be your parents, a teacher, a grandparent, a friend, or even when you get older, a coworker. They will always be with you no matter what. Yeah, but then there's people you'll never be able to please or satisfy. People that don't and won't ever like you. They say you'll never amount to anything. You can never do anything right. And even when you do do something right, they'll dismiss it as nothing to brag about. Then they'll accuse you of trying to be better than them. Then there are the people in between. It's up to you to influence the rest, but always, always respect yourself. Do what you think is right. Listen to yourself. Respect yourself. people, there can be a lot of noise, so let's talk about loudness. There are times when noise is appropriate and expected, like when you're on a playground, at a stadium, or in a concert. But there are also times when noise, loudness, or even movement can be disrespectful. For example, when walking through the halls between classes or studying in the library, be quiet. Be quiet and still during moments of silence designated at your school day. At a memorial service for people who have died during a performance, or during the national anthem, or pledge of allegiance. To honor the symbols of our country, be silent. If you are sitting, stand. If you are in line for your seat, stop and face the flag. Put your right hand over your heart. If men and boys are wearing hats, take off your hat and put it over your heart. Some people don't pledge allegiance because of their religion, which is perfectly acceptable. They will stand silently and respectfully anyway. You needn't sing along with another team or country's anthem or pledge, just remain standing silently, still, and respectfully. Never, ever boo. There are also times at school and work where you need to be quiet so others can do their work. When you finish the test, please get something to read or something to draw on while the others finish the test. During those times, try to find something quiet to do rather than disturb others. When you are talking to someone, you like to think that they are listening and interested in what you're saying. People in jobs and families say that listening is very important. I'd say listening is one of the most important skills for work. My teachers listen to me. I like that. I like when my parents listen to me. So it's important to listen and look like you're listening. Watch these situations and see if people seem to be listening. Such, Such a, a pretty, pretty day. day. And it's, it's always, always time, time for lunch, lunch and recess. Anna, are you ready for the test? What? What'd you say? She, she doesn't, doesn't know what she's, she's talking, talking about. about. It's, it's not, not my, my fault. fault. Kristen, Kristen started, started it. No, it's not. Kristen started it. Wait a second. Let me hear Kristen's part, and then I'll hear yours. We have a new uh, exhibit called the Galapagos Tortoise Exhibit, which has a new Galapagos Tortoise This is so boring. Even when the presentation you're attending isn't interesting to you, respect the occasion and people presenting. Try to get something out of the event. How would you feel the same thing happened to you? Uh, this is my part about, um, 
Uh, this is my part, but of course there are times when listening isn't appropriate. Like when you overhear a conversation that isn't intended for you. That's eavesdropping. Oh, great. We'll need those delivered as soon as possible. Thank you. I'll look for you on Friday. What's going to be delivered on Friday? Well, that's it for the show. And remember, silence, stillness, and good listening indicate that you respect people and the situation. So until the next time we meet... Hey, hey, you, wake up. There may come a time when you need to defend yourself against unfair criticism or misunderstanding. There's a respectful way to do this. Let's say you have an issue with someone, an argument or a disagreement. Even though you may disagree, respect the person and their point of view. Let them tell their side of the story. Don't interrupt. Don't try to throw all the blame on someone else, because you may have really caused part of the problem. Wayne! What, what did I do? When people are telling their side, don't glare at them, back talk. I'm not going to do it. Or mumble under your breath. You can't make me do it. You're not my mother. You don't get anywhere with that tactic, except maybe the principal's office or trouble with your parents. However, if you were misunderstood or wrongly accused, explain your position calmly. Oh, me and Miss Mace, when you yelled at me about my homework in front of the class, I felt kind of embarrassed. So, could you just tell me in private instead of in front of my friends? You're right. I was wrong to do that, and I apologize. Sometimes we teachers and parents need to be reminded to treat students with respect because we expect it from you. Hi. Welcome back. We've been talking about manners for speaking to people and listening as ways to show respect but you can also show respect by writing people. Developing your skills for writing little letters of thoughtfulness and appreciation will last you your whole life. So let's talk about how to write those letters. Let's start with what you write with. There are all kinds of stationery and cards you can buy. There are all kinds of stationery you can make. And there are all kinds of fun pens and interesting stamps to make writing those notes a pleasure, not a chore. Now that you have your things to write with, let's talk about what to write about. Let's say your homeroom mother was great this year. What can you do? Write her a thank you note. Let's say your PE teacher won the marathon. What can you do? Write her a note of congratulations. Let's say your friend has been in and out of the hospital. What can you do? Send her a funny get well card. Let's say someone in your friend's family died. What can you do? and a note of condolence. So let's talk about how to write to people. In the upper right hand corner, write your return address and the date. Then over to the left, write dear and the person's name. Dear Mrs. Rivers. Then write what you're going to say. You've been the best homeroom parent. We appreciate all you've done for us this year. Sincerely, Mrs. Child's Homeroom. Dear Coach Bow, congratulations on placing third in the women's marathon. We're proud of you. Love Mr. Harley's home room. Dear Robert, we sure miss seeing you at school. We will be happy when you return. Love Miss Lopez's class. Dear men, we are sorry for the death of your sister. We are thinking of you and will be there for you. Love Mr. Zupan's class. See, the letters don't have to be that long. Two or three sentences is all, but people really, really appreciate your thoughtfulness. They sometimes read them again and again. When you're through writing, fold it. Put it in an envelope and address it like this. In the upper left-hand corner, put your return address. In the middle, write their address. Put a stamp in the upper right-hand corner, then mail it. Some schools have their own post offices. You can write each other that way. Writing is a great skill to learn. It's polite, it's respectful, people appreciate receiving them, and they read them over and over. Here's my note to you. Dear viewers, I enjoyed the time we spent together. 
Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Sincerely, LaToya. Don't you? As you grow older, you will find yourself in many different situations where eating is an important part of an event, like an awards banquet or a reception. It is really nice to know what to do so you don't have to worry about yourself so that you can relax and have a good time. Sometimes I have to set the table, but I think I've figured out an easy way to remember how. Your fork goes on your left because both fork and left have four letters, F-O-R-K and L-E-F-T, so the fork goes on the left. Now for the spoon and the knife. Gee, I wonder, S-P-O-O-N and knife, K-N-I-F-E, all have five letters. So does the word right, R-I-G-H-T. So the spoon, the knife, and even the glass go on the right, G-L-A-S-S. -S. You hold your utensils much like you hold a pen. This. Not this. Sometimes you have a fancy table with two forks and a cloth napkin. Or you may attend a reception where you eat a snack but not a full meal. But most of the time you eat informally at home or at school and even with your fingers. No matter the setting, eat politely. That way you show respect for yourself in knowing how to act, respect for the occasion, and respect for those around you. When sharing a meal with someone, take small bites, chew with your mouth closed, and swallow most of the food before you talk. Sit up straight. Don't hover over your food, shoveling it in. Try to cut your food with your fork, but if not, you can use your knife like this. Your napkin goes into your lap. You wipe your mouth like this. When you're done eating, you gently place it to the left of your plate. Don't wad it up into a ball. In a formal setting, you may have a bread plate. That's the little plate to your upper left for your rolls. F-O-O-D and L-E-F-T still works. Put your butter on your plate and butter small bites of your bread. Don't saw it in two, slather it with butter, and eat it like a hamburger bun. In passing items, start with the ones closest to you. First offer it to the person on your left, then continue to pass it to your right. After that, the items may be passed any which way. Take the food on the top. Don't touch the food and then return it to the serving dish or beg others for food they may have brought from home. You may begin to eat once your host eats or once everybody has been served, you may begin. And remember to keep the conversation quiet. With all the noise from the kids in the cafeteria or at a banquet, it can get very loud. Sometimes you may share your meal with adults. You might be invited to sit at the principal's table or maybe someone's mom or dad will come and eat lunch with your class. Or maybe you're included in a reception. Introduce yourself. You already know how to do that. Talk about pleasant things. Don't make fun of the food or what other people are eating. There are many different types of table settings, from simple to not so simple. You'll encounter all kinds of chances to use your table manners for your school, family, and eventually for your work. You'll do okay if you remember your table manners. Make eating with others a pleasant experience for everyone. Bon appetit. Have you ever traded places? Maybe you sat in the back seat going someplace. Then on the way back, you sat in the front. Or you visited someone as a guest. Then the next time, you invited your friend and you were the host. Being a good guest and a good host are good things to know. Leland Burns, your guest is arrived. Oh, that'll be Sergeant Young. Today's career day, and she's coming to our school to tell us all about her job. She's our guest, and I'm the host. So I'm going to take good care of her during her visit with us. We have guests come to our school all the time, so it's important for us to know how to make them feel welcome. We really appreciate people visiting our school. To keep people coming and honor their time, we practice how to be good hosts. We prepared for our guest visit. We fixed her a name tag. We told the people in the office to expect her. We've cleaned up our room. Now that she's here, I'll go meet her. I'll introduce myself, 
thank her for coming and lead her back to our class. On the way, I'll tell her about some of the things we'll pass. I'll show her our special mural, the media center, the cafeteria, and the restroom. As we get to the classroom, I'll take her coat, open the door for her, and lead her to her seat. As a class, we're being good hosts by listening to what she has to say. But that's easy, because it's so interesting. Well, would you like to come to my office one day to visit? Yay! Now it's time for us to be the guest and her to be the host. We're trading places. We're preparing for our visit by dressing up a little and thinking of appropriate questions to ask Sergeant Young, like how long she's worked at the police department and what she likes about it. But we won't ask her any questions that might seem rude, like how much money she makes. You don't ask people that. They'll tell you if they want to. Sergeant Young's a good host. She's ready for us. She made our name tags. She doesn't make us wait. She comes as soon as we arrive. She introduces us to her coworkers and the people who report to her. We feel welcome, and we try to be good guests. And we keep our hands to ourselves, not looking through the things on her desk or touching things that aren't ours. Because you were so good visiting our station, we'd like to welcome you to come back at any time and you can even shadow me. You get a chance to ride with me all day long to see what I do. How about that? Yeah! Anytime you and your classmates go somewhere, you represent your school. That means people will look at how you act and say, oh, that's what kind of school that is. Use your manners, especially in public places. Be quiet as you take your seats and wait for the performance to begin. Clap at appropriate times to show your appreciation but don't get wild. Even if the program doesn't really interest you, be polite. Your guests don't have to be someone from the outside. You're a guest in your own school when you visit an office, the media center, or even another classroom. Not before you open a door. Wait for people to invite you in. Sometimes you use someone else's desk. Don't mess with things that aren't yours. Be a good guest, be respectful. Being a good guest and a good host are important skills to learn. They aren't that hard if you work at them. And confidentially, it makes you look good and feel good. And now our time is over. Thank you for watching our show. I enjoyed the time we spent together. Goodbye. Time to wake up. We've got a surprise for you today. Mom. We're leaving in about 15 minutes. Is everybody ready? We're leaving in three minutes! Okay, time to go! Everybody in the car for the amusement park! Yay! 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 people's time. Be punctual. Sure, there are some things you can't control, but when you can, do something about it. Work to be on time. It's a good skill to develop for school and work. Arrive on time for practices. Finish your homework early so you don't have to worry about it. Arrive on time at concerts or plays so you don't disturb others or miss the good parts. Do all you can to be on time. Hi, my name is Marjorie. I'm 12 years old, and already I know lots and lots of people. I probably know hundreds and hundreds of people. People of all ages and sizes and shapes and colors and abilities. When I see someone from a distance or meet someone new, I'm naturally curious. I want to learn things about them. I would like to know if they like the same things that I like. I want to know where they come from, if they have any brothers or sisters, or what they like to do. And if the person is different from me in any way, like if they can't see, or if they're from a different culture, or if they have to use a wheelchair or leg braces, or if they worship in a different way, or if they're from a different neighborhood, 
I'm curious, but I want to be respectful. When you become the person's friend, first you can find out more about them. It may be that some things in their life are just the same as yours, or some things may be very different. Being different can be very interesting. It can enrich your life to see how other people live, eat, worship, and have fun. People from all over the world come to our school. They may like to eat different foods. They may dress different ways. They may talk differently. They may observe different holidays or not observe any at all. Invite your friends to make a presentation to your class so that you can learn about other cultures. You might learn a whole lot of interesting things and make some really good friends. People with different abilities also come to our school. Some may use a wheelchair or some may use a cane. Some may have a hearing impairment or some may not have any hair or may have scars. But they all have the same interests and needs that you do. Offer to help these students. Include them in your play and parties. Now that you know a little bit about people who are different, you'll have so many wonderful friends with great interests and talents from all over the country and the world. But others may not be as open-minded as you are. They may say unkind things or make fun of your friends or others like them. To be respectful of them and your friends, try to consider ways to open the minds of your friends. When they say things you consider inappropriate, then respond by saying, that kind of comment isn't necessary, correct, or appropriate. Or, I'd appreciate you not saying those unkind things. Don't let people say unkind things about others. Gently correct them. Even if we are different, inside we have the same types of feelings. Manners help us get along so that we can be different and still be polite to one another. Not everyone has to be the same. That would make life pretty dull. So respect differences in each other. Be polite to other people, all different types of people. It's the best way to be. And besides, polite people, respectful people, have the most fun.